Because we are choosing who's going in and out of the event. I'm sorry. Why are you choosing us not to go in when we have an invite? Right, you specifically singled us out. <laughs> That's racist. Is it because we have the jobs? I'm happy to talk to so it someone is. else. It is because it is. that's clearly, <laughs> clearly I, I was afraid of this. You singled us out, not, out of everybody. What? Is that against Democrats? The whole you singled us campaign? Out. That's very Islamophobic. That's very racist. I'm sorry. Are you? That was a snippet of a viral video recorded in Las Vegas on January 27th outside of a Get the Vote Out event featuring Vice President Kamala Harris. And as you just saw, two Muslim women wearing hijabs were denied entry despite having RSVP'd for the event in advance, which then prompted CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, to issue a press statement asking why two Muslim women were conspicuously barred from the event. And that led to Biden's rapid response director, Amar Musa, writing this on Twitter. Quote, these individuals were among the group of people not allowed to attend Saturday's event after previously disrupting and shutting down events with Democratic elected officials. But here's the problem. That was not explained to them outside of the event, and it should have been, which then prompted them and other attendees to just assume that they were being racially profiled. Let's watch. Keep coming through. We have you're an part invite. of the LGBT community too, right? And you're still going to kick us out? Come on through. Are you serious? That's crazy. Wow. I, now I really vote. won't vote right. for Biden and Harris. That's crazy. Can they come in? They, they were already. Sorry. 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 Why not? It is. Yes, because it is. why isn't it? We have an invitation. I'm, we're out, there are we're plenty out of here. Out of, here. Out of, no, here, I don't come up I with understand. excuses because I. I you are a black with, woman and you're coming up with excuses I'm not for racism coming up, as well. I didn't, yes, you I did. didn't give you an excuse. You I'm just letting said you that know, we're not being I'm you know but when you clearly are. I'm letting you know that you've been disinvited from me. Yeah, not a great look at all. But before anyone got an actual explanation, that clip right there garnered more than a million views on Twitter. Not a great look for the Biden administration who is currently struggling to win back Arab American voters. And the worst part is that all of this could have been avoided. They could have just given them the reason why they were disinvited or better yet, just not disinvited them at all. Just let them in regardless. And if they protest, they protest because guess what? They have a right to vocalize concerns with the vice president of the United States, who's part of an administration that is aiding and abetting a genocide in Gaza. In fact, the best way to stop these disruptions altogether, aside from just disinviting hecklers, is to listen to your base and stop doing a genocide. But this is just one of the many humiliations the Biden administration has faced recently as a result of their ongoing support for genocide in Gaza. After a disastrous poll by the Arab American Institute showed his support with Arab Americans cratered due to his support for Israel, his team finally decided to go to Michigan to try to meet with Arab American leaders and maybe rebuild this bridge that he burned. But none of the people that they invited actually showed up which is incredibly embarrassing, but I don't know what he expected. The mass murder of Gazans has not stopped. So why would he think that they'd even be open to dialogue with him when an obvious precondition to a meeting would be an end to the genocide in the first place? But I mean, the anger towards Biden goes beyond his continued support for Israel's genocide in Gaza because he's now making matters worse by instituting policy changes on his own volition that will literally starve Gazans to death by cutting off aid to UNRWA, an organization that the Biden administration itself has acknowledged is crucial for Gazans. UNRWA has done and continues to do invaluable work uh, to address the humanitarian situation in Gaza at great personal risk to UNRWA me uh, members. Uh, I believe it's over 100 UNRWA staff members have been killed doing this life-saving work, uh, and we continue to not only support it, but we continue to commend them for the really heroic efforts that they make uh, uh, oftentimes uh, while making the, the greatest sacrifice. So that was State Department spokesman Matt Miller articulating the Biden administration's thoughts on UNRWA on January 17th. But fast forward to today, and that's somehow still their official position, seemingly, at least based on what Blinken is saying, despite the fact that 
the United States and other countries have suspended aid to UNRWA following allegations that a dozen staffers were involved in Hamas's October 7th attack. Now, the evidence comes from Israel, and Secretary Blinken even admitted that the United States hasn't even conducted an actual investigation themselves before deciding to cut off aid to UNRWA. Times of Israel reports, quote, we haven't had the ability to investigate the allegations ourselves, but they are highly, highly credible, Blinken said during a press conference. Blinken stressed that the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees plays an indispensable role in providing assistance to civilians in the Gaza Strip and that no one else can play the role that UNRWA has been playing, certainly not in the near term. Isn't that amazing? So, no, we haven't investigated the allegations ourselves. And yes, we do know that UNRWA's operation is crucial for the literal survival of Gazans, but we're going to cut off aid anyway. We're going to punish all Gazans for the alleged acts of 12 staffers out of an organization of 13,000 staffers in total. But the organization is very important. Make it make sense. It doesn't make sense. Now, in the last video that you saw, Max Miller referenced the 100 UNRWA staffers who were killed. But that language there is also part of the problem with the Biden administration. These staffers didn't just die of natural causes or spontaneously combust. They were murdered by Israel. But the Biden administration is still refusing to acknowledge the war crimes being committed by Israel, despite ample evidence. And they're not responding to Israel's war crimes by cutting off arms or punishing them in any way. He just pretends like it's not happening and bypasses Congress to transfer even more weapons to them. And Joshua P. Hill pointed out this double standard via Twitter, writing, Israel kills over 100 UN workers. Nothing. Israel alleges 12 UN workers are Hamas. The West defunds aid to hundreds of thousands of starving people. It's just so ridiculous. And if this report about 12 UNRWA staffers is correct, you punish those staffers specifically not the entire organization, because in doing so, you are effectively administering collective punishment to all Gazans. They don't deserve to suffer for the crimes of 12 staffers. And the result is going to be, I don't even want to say catastrophic, because there's not language to really articulate how bad this is going to be. Here's just a couple of gut-wrenching quotes from CNN about the mass famine already ensuing in Gaza. Quote, They are weak now. They always have diarrhea. Their faces are yellow. El Jamara, whose family was displaced from northern Gaza, told CNN on January 9th. Quote, My 17-year-old daughter tells me she feels dizziness. My husband is not eating. Her husband, by the way, has cancer. Quote, We are dying slowly, reflected El Jamara, the mother in Rafa. I think it's even better to die from the bombs and at least we will be martyrs. But now we are dying out of hunger and thirst. Mohammed Hamouda, a physical therapist displaced to Rafa, remembers the day his colleague, Odeh Alha, was killed trying to get water for his family. Alha was queuing at a water station in Jabalia refugee camp in northern Gaza when he and dozens of others were struck by Israeli bombardment, Hamouda said. Unfortunately, many relatives and friends are still in the northern Gaza Strip suffering a lot. Hamouda, a father of three, told CNN, they eat grass and drink polluted water. Just stop for a moment and think about that. They are eating grass and drinking polluted water to survive. They know that drinking polluted water is going to make them sick, but they have no choice. It's that or die of thirst. It's just the level of suffering being inflicted on Gazans with our tax dollars, mind you, is incomprehensible. We can't ever fathom that much pain and suffering unless we've lived it ourselves. It's a nightmare situation. And what little resources they had is now being cut off by the Biden administration. I never, ever want to hear him talk about how cruel Donald Trump or any third world dictator is ever again. I don't ever want to hear the United States talk about human rights because what we're doing here is monstrous. And to make matters worse, as Biden aids a genocide in Gaza, he's also at home working out a plan on immigration with Republicans to shut down the border and deny people their human right to apply for asylum after our foreign policy, by the way, and drug policy destroy their countries. Biden is an absolute fucking monster. And what he's doing now is just it's so unforgivable. But thankfully, even people like Bernie Sanders, who haven't been brave enough to call for a ceasefire, are demanding a reversal from the Biden administration with regard to the UNRWA policy. Bernie says, quote, we cannot allow millions to suffer because of the actions of 12 people. The U.S. and other countries must restore funding to stave off this humanitarian catastrophe. Now, also, Rashida Tlaib echoed the same call, quote, to take concerning allegations as fact without any investigation, especially in light 
of the Israeli government's well-documented history of using torture and obtaining forced confessions as a means to suspend life-saving aid demonstrates the emptiness of the Biden administration's claims to care about Palestinian lives to leave told Politico in a statement. Now, AOC said the same thing on Twitter, writing, cutting off support to UNRWA, the primary source of humanitarian aid to 2 million plus Gazans, is unacceptable among an organization of 13,000 UN aid workers risking the starvation of millions over grave allegations of 12 is indefensible. The U.S. should restore aid immediately. And good on these progressives for calling on Biden to do the bare minimum here. But I want to get back to his standing with Arab Americans because it's easy to see why they are so outraged by the Biden administration. Aside from the policy, things are now even worse because they're now seeing viral videos of Muslims being disinvited from get out the vote events and they're not getting any explanations, so they just assume that they're being racially profiled and that Biden doesn't want their votes. I mean, the level of incompetence here by the Biden administration is genuinely jaw-dropping. Seeing that viral video is like adding insult to injury, literally. Biden couldn't handle this situation worse if he tried. And he doesn't need to try to placate those of us who are angry by wagging the finger at Netanyahu again while continuing to give him more weapons. He needs to cease the U.S.'s participation in genocide immediately. Anything short of that may cost him the election. And if it does, he'll only have himself to blame. Oh, man.